Imagine being able to fly like a bird by defying gravity and jumping off the world's biggest buildings. For Vince the Jetman, this wasn't just a dream, it was something he did every day. With a jetpack on his back, he flew through the sky, dancing through the clouds and defying time and space. He bravely went to great heights, setting an amazing record of over 177,000 parachute jumps and 1,400 base jumps. He had no idea that his boundless energy would lead him to an unimaginable fate. You could also say it was kind of predictable. Vince, who goes by the name Vince, was born in France on September 15, 1984, into a skydiving family. His father surprised Hum to do his first jump, a tandem jump, when he was 14 years old. Even though it was an exciting event, the real turning point came when he did his first jump by himself when he was 15 years old. He couldn't get rid of his excessive fear as he got on the plane for this trip by himself. But something very strange happened as soon as he jumped into the sky. He no longer felt scared like he did on the plane. Instead, he felt incredibly excited. That's when he decided he wanted to skydive for the rest of his life. When I touched the ground after that jump, I knew what I wanted to do with my life, Vince said. I wanted to make a living by flying. I will always remember that time when I felt safe in the air. I knew that jumping was what I was meant to do. Finding joy in the middle of fear was a turning point in Vince's life that would affect him for the rest of his days. Vince became very interested in flying instead of following his original plan to become a carpenter and compete in judo competitions. He finished his AFF course in just four jumps, and he was already friends with Fred Fugan, a skilled free flyer who became his mentor. Vince quickly became very good at the sport because Fred taught him everything he needed to know. This was the exciting beginning of his skydiving career, which would take him on amazing journeys he had never thought possible. Also, it was the start of a relationship with Fred that would last for 20 years and never end. The funny thing about Vince's comment was that, We are not married, though. Steph Fardell, creator of Babylon, knew these two young men and asked them to join him. Vince and Fred had a lot of success as the French flying team Babylon Freefly. They won three Free Fly World Championships in 2004, in Brazil, in 2006, and in 2008 in France. But Vince and Fred decided it was time to try something new after six years of competition. Even though they were very young at the time, they watched Lojean Albert, the father of the Soul Flyers. He flew close to the ground in a wingsuit and was the first person to do so. Vincent and Fred came up to Lo and asked him, Can we join the Soul Flyers team? They were amazed by what he was doing. Lowe replied, Of course, you have the spirit. That was the first of many times we would go base jumping together. Their journey with the Soul Flyers got off to a great start, but it wasn't easy. There was a major injury to Lowe's back while speed flying. He had to have surgery and wasn't sure when he could jump again, so he had to stop skydiving. But he told Vince and Fred that they should carry on the Soul Flyers tradition together, which would help them stay true to their own identities. At this point, the Soul Flyers were mostly interested in flying in wingsuits and base jumping. In 2010, Vince and Fred did amazing head-down base jumps from the troll wall. They even did their signature move, the Tiat, while flying next to the edge of the cliff. Then, in 2013, they jumped from rocks near Lake Garda, Italy at night, which was a whole new level of base jumping. This was their first base wingsuit jump at night, and the footage they got of it under the moonlight was amazing. But Soul Flyers were only just beginning. Vince and Fred's amazing jumps from the Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest building at 2,717 feet, made news all over the world in 2014. This dream became a reality after three years of talks. There were five jumps during the day and one risky jump at night from a specially built platform at the top. They cut a path through the sky around the Burj Khalifa with orange smoke and yellow suits, getting some amazing footage for their video. Their real happiness and sense of fun were clear, showing that their main goal was to have fun. Over 33 million people have watched the video of this amazing feat on YouTube, which shows how fearless and eager for adventure they are. Fred and Vince went on an amazing flight trip in the same year, 2014, jumping from 33,000 feet, which is the very top of Earth's atmosphere. Without wearing pressure suits, this is the very last thing that can be done. With oxygen masks, ski goggles, and an oxygen cylinder strapped across their bellies, they went out into temperatures that dropped to minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit, which is very cold. With a beautifully choreographed free-fly dance, they flew through the sky, defying the cold air's hold. 
After setting off their parachutes, they spent six mesmerizing minutes descending gracefully next to Mont Blanc, carefully navigating their canopies and the terrain. After seven minutes of total focus, there were two hours of happiness. We were so happy to have done another crazy thing together, Vince and Fred said. That's how it works again with us. Not content with that, Vince had a dream about a strange jump in 2017. I saw myself jumping off a mountain and re-entering a plane through the door. This image was a tribute to Patrick de Gardon, who in 1997 jumped from a porter plane and then re-entered the same plane. He was the first person to wear a modern wingsuit. Because Vince never got to meet Patrick, he had a lot of respect for what he had done. Vince and Fred made this dream come true after four months of hard training that included 100 test flights and getting over an early failure due to an injury. They jumped off of Switzerland's Jungfrau and glided down in their wingsuits before smoothly getting back on the Porter plane that was flying at 80 miles per hour at the time. After that, their exit, flying in perfect formation with the Porter, was a fitting tribute to Patrick's famous feat 20 years later. Vince didn't stop there, though. Vince could fly with planes and canopies while wearing a wingsuit, or he could be a jet man and fly in order with different types of planes. In 2009, while Vince and Babylon were working together, they ran into Eve Rossi, the creator of the Jetman. Vince asked if he could be Jetman because he was naturally interested. The Jetman had a big stiff wing, but no engine at that time. Vince took the jump without fear and completed two flights with amazing ease. Vince's bold actions often went viral on social media, making people all over the world excited and interested. Even though Vince did some crazy tricks, it was all just for fun for him. Vince felt most at ease in the sky, whether he was wearing a wingsuit, a parachute, or a power jetpack. Vince worked hard for a few months to learn how to control the Jetman, which turned into a complex flying machine with jet engines. The Jetman had a carbon fiber wing that was 1832 feet long and driven by four small jet engines that were controlled by the body. It was possible for the Jetman to go as fast as 250 miles per hour, hover, change directions, and do turns with this gear. Vincent and Eve did an amazing thing in 2015. They flew the Jetman, the world's smallest airplane, next to an Airbus A380, the world's biggest passenger plane. To give you an idea of how small they were, Think about the winglet on the A380. This is the small vertical part at the tip of the wing. The public was mesmerized by this carefully planned aerial show that took place over the beautiful Palm Jumeirah and the Dubai city. During this amazing flying show, people on the huge airliner even got to wave at the Soul Flyers, which was simply amazing. Not only did Vince want to break the rules of physics, though. In December of that same year, he would ask the love of his life to marry him in a very perfect way. He asked her to marry him by writing Agnes, Will You Marry Me? on the back of his jetpack wings. Agnes flew next to him in a chopper. It was such a sweet offer that she couldn't say no. The wedding took place in May 2017, but Vince wasn't going to be happy with that. Vince tried to do something amazing in Dubai in February 2020. In his earlier flights, he took off from helicopters or tall buildings. This time, he started his journey from the ground. Vince could reach a top speed of about 150 miles per hour, and the jet wing could reach an altitude of 6,000 feet thanks to a new automatic stabilization system that allowed hovering flight. He used a parachute to make sure he would land safely. Vince told the Associated Press in 2015, It's the feeling of freedom. Something about skydiving makes me feel free. I can go almost anywhere, but I'm always going down. I can fly like a bird with the jetpack, though. It was, however, that very same Jetman that would lead to his sad end. Vince's Tuesday, November 17th, 2020. Began like any other day. Things went badly, though, while they were training in the sands of Dubai. Vince and his team got together for a pre-flight meeting as the sun set. They were getting ready for a very difficult training exercise, where they had to pretend to take off from the ground, fly along a triangle-shaped path, and land on an 800-foot platform using jet engines. At the right height, the plan was to use a chopper to look like the platform. It looked like just another day for a man who lived to fight gravity. As the moment of truth got closer, they talked about the risks of flying at 800 feet. A pyro rocket emergency parachute was their backup plan. They could use it to get back in control if something went wrong during the flight. Vince's jetman pulled him into the sky as the engines roared to life. 
He felt the thrill that he had felt countless times before, but only for a short time. But something terrible went wrong. It was heart-stopping when Vince lost control and went into an uncontrolled backflip 800 feet above the ground. A camera on his helmet caught the whole thing on video. This kind of backflip was common when the wings were on, and it was usually easy to fix by pushing forward during the flip. Vince had been able to get back up after spins like that before, but those were at higher altitudes. At those heart-stopping times, we can only guess what he was thinking. The team talked about safety steps before the flight. It was there to save their lives and get them back to the ground safely if something went wrong. But Vince didn't pick this safety step for some reason we don't know. Perhaps it was the natural urge of an experienced daredevil to fight for power or the desire to do something that couldn't be done. He was falling through the sky of Dubai and his hands were moving like he thought he could get back on his jet wing after the backflip. They tried very hard and desperately, but it was too late. The video showed the parachute opening, which was a very sad sight. It spread out after Vince had already hit the hard ground below. Vince, who was 36 years old, died instantly after the terrible accident. The General Civil Aviation Authority sent investigators to do a full investigation. Their research took them to a mysterious answer. Vince did not open his parachute during the fall, and there was no good reason for this. In addition, their research showed that the jet wing had no mechanical issues. It had worked perfectly. Extreme sports fans were shocked when they heard about Vince Ra's terrible accident. He had lived on the edge, danced with the clouds, and tried to go against gravity many times. But on that terrible day, the sky, which had been his playground, was where he died. If this video taught you something or made you think, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content.